Welcome back everyone. In today's video, I'm going to give you a walkthrough of the DW E7 485 8 and 1 quarter inch compact table saw by DeWalt. Now this is my new table saw. As you can see, I just unboxed it and I put it on top of my old table saw, which is the rigid job site table saw. This table saw is going to replace that one once I build a complete cart and storage system for it but that will be in a later video. Today, we're just going to focus on setting up this table saw and walk through some of its features. Now, this table saw has basically the same powered motor as my DeWalt DW364 7 and 1 quarter inch circular saw, and this is a pretty heavy, this is probably one of the heaviest circular saws by DeWalt, and it's because of the motor and the size of the motor and this thing I've had for probably about eight and a half years now. As far as circular saws go, this is pretty much bomb proof. It's gone through all sorts of outdoor construction projects and it's still in fantastic shape. The motor is unbeatable. And so I'm looking forward to seeing what the table saw can do. Okay, first things first, we're going to make sure that the blade is in there nice and snug and is actually tightened. So I'm gonna unlock the throat plate, pull that off, set that aside. These canvas pieces you see on either side of the blade compartment are dust covers. They help prevent dust from getting into the motor and into other moving parts of the table saw, um, which I really like. I like the fact that they put these in here because I have problems with my rigid table saw where dust has just embedded itself into moving parts, into gears, into the motor probably. Now I know the riving knife's in there nice and tight so I don't have to mess with that at all unless I want to put the blade guard on then I have to take this off. At the back of the table saw we have the wrenches. They're held on by this wing nut and We've got two identical wrenches. So we want to make sure that the blade is on nice and tight. It's already been pre-installed. Using my finger, I can tell that the nut is on there nice and tight, but I'm just going to double check to make sure. You do not want to over tighten these. So I'm going to use the open end on the inside and then I'll use the closed end on the outside. Just so you know, that's loosened it. We're gonna tighten it again just to make sure. Just to say that I've done it and made sure that I've got it on tight enough. All right, that's good. Okay, so that's the blade. And put the throat plate back and lock it in place. Okay, now I'm down here with the um, bevel adjustment. I want to make sure that this is at zero. So right now it's reading zero. So every the blade should be zeroed out. I've actually disengaged this and moved it a couple of times just to make sure. And it's locked at zero, so now I'm going to check for square. So now with the blade raised up all the way, I'm going to get a metal square. I'm gonna set it against, not against the protruding part of the tooth, but against the side here of the blade. And it looks like that's square and it's sitting exactly where we want it. So I unlock the bevel adjustment and you just basically push everything up. Whoa. It's a bit stiff. Okay, that's about as far as it goes. So we're assuming that's hitting 45 degrees. Now, I could use one of those magnetic things. I have one of those magnetic gauges, um, and sure, they work really well. I find that because my shop floor is not level, it's a garage floor that has a pitch going towards the front of the garage, it throws off the magnetic gauge a little bit. And so I tend to use a protractor like this one to check my angles. So it should hit 45 degrees and it's looking perfect at 45 degrees. 
For the table saw fence, the nice thing about this is that I don't actually have to move the fence. The fence actually moves along this track system. So I hit the release right here on the side and I can move. It's a dual rail system on the front and back. So it simply just moves in and out like that. And what I like about this system is I never have to actually move the fence itself. I don't have this table saw plugged in at all yet, just so you guys know. And i put it up against my fence. It's looking good on this side. Check the other side. And we're good on this side too. So we want to make sure that the fence is zeroing out on the scale correctly. So position one, which is the inside position, will follow the yellow scale at the top. And that's what you want to zero out first. You want to make sure, as the owner manual states, you can loosen these screws and adjust your scale if you need to. Mine is already getting to zero in the correct spot. So we're in good shape. So how do you know if your fence is zeroing out properly? Well, what I do, just to double check, is I set it at one inch, okay? And then I lock it, and then I raise the blade. And once again, we'll take, we'll take my combination square and mine is actually off by 16th of an inch. So the scale needs to be realigned so that it's reading correctly. Now we're, at, now we're at precisely one inch where if I were to cut something, whatever that material is, the thickness will be exactly one inch. And zeroed out on the yellow scale, the white scale should fall in line. And so if I move the fence to position two, which will allow me to cut material at 24 inches in width. I can rip material at 24 inches in width. That is exactly four inches, or it should be exactly four inches between the two pins. So that's the compensation. That is why that white scale starts at four. We have an exact four inches. It actually goes out really far. It goes out almost as far as my rigid job site saw does. I think this does maybe 23 or 24. Here's the part that some of you guys are really going to be happy with. Riving knife. I have a riving knife again for the first time in like two and a half years. Finally, a table saw that works with a smaller blade and has the appropriate riving knife with it. Um, Bob Chase would be really happy with this table saw, by the way. If he were alive today, he would look at this and go, wow, this is exactly how they should be building them. Actually comes with a decent blade, but this is more or less a framing blade. You see, it's a 24 tooth carbide. Uh, pretty good for general purpose. It's a construction blade, so it's exactly the type of blade you could buy for like $7. It'll probably work great for most rip cuts, but I might switch to a uh, 40 or 60 tooth blade at some point. Oh, I'll lock that back in place. I like the locking throat plate. That's a really great feature to have because you always wonder if these throat plates are gonna go flying out. That puts us at two and a half inches. So a little bit more, of course, than my seven and one quarter inch. Two and a half inches is more than enough blade for any job. It's actually too much already. I'd go, I wouldn't do more definitely than uh, two inches. The vacuum hose for my rigid shop vac, which goes into my cyclone system, fits better, if you can believe it, fits better than it does in my rigid table saw. And that is because DeWalt makes the dust port out of cast aluminum. The all important miter gauge. And their miter gauge, the miter slot is actually a little, it's a double slot, so 
It's got a flange on the, uh, the bar itself, which is a little more stable than some miter slots, which is just basically a straight bar that goes through. And it's got slots already in it and a hole. That's going to make it easy to fit different attachments onto this, different jigs. Of course, it also comes with the blade guard, an additional dust port, I imagine. That's what that is. But I imagine this replaces the riving knife. Same thickness as the riving knife that's in here. So that was actually smart of DeWalt to do this. They've got a riving knife that's in there already that can be removed. And from what I can see here, it just this just replaces it. This whole assembly replaces that riving knife and goes straight in. I'm never using this. And the reason why is because I use so many jigs on the table saw. And I have nothing against this safety feature, okay? If you guys are using a safety feature like this, or you're using a blade guard, please use your blade guard. I'm not telling you not to use your blade guard. For me personally, I will probably not be using this at all because I have jigs that I've got to use on here. I've got a crosscut sled. You can't use a crosscut sled with a blade guard. It doesn't work. Everybody knows that. Now I'm not going to wear my headphones because uh, I want to actually hear how loud this is. I'm not going to actually cut anything just yet. Well, it's not quiet, but I didn't expect it to be quiet. I like the buttons on it. I really do like the button. I like the on-off switch. The off switch is pretty catchy. The blade spins still, obviously, after you shut it off. And it's got the safety switch. I'll just take this two-inch piece of cedar as a test. It's a rough piece of wood, but that's okay. So we're going to try and cut that first. Well that concludes setting up the DeWalt 8 and 1 quarter inch compact table saw. So I don't know if it's because it's just brand new or it's because it's a better motor, but I'm getting a very good, decent cut out of this. No tear out. Of course it's a brand new blade, but it's not a special blade at all. It's still doing a very good job of ripping this thick piece of cedar. For the moment, I will hold off on making a zero clearance throat plate for this because I actually like the throat plate on this one it locks in place and is designed in a certain way that's a little bit safer. So I'm going to try and stick with this for now and see how we do. It also facilitates better dust collection if I don't go to zero clearance. We'll see what it's like. The real test will be when I cut the plywood to build the cart for this table saw. If you want to help me continue to make and edit these videos, head on over to my donation page right over here. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. There are a couple more videos on this side you can watch. Until next time, thanks for watching and have a great day.